Matthew chapter number 13. I'm going to just read a few verses. We'll begin reading in verse 33. The Bible says, Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We're thankful you first loved us. Lord, we certainly thank you for your marvelous grace and your tender mercy and your long-suffering. Lord, we're undeserving of it all, but we are very grateful for it. Lord, we are recipients of those wonderful qualities of God. Now, fathers, we come to you this morning. We thank you for these that have assembled in the house of God. We thank you, Lord, for... Lord, the place you provided, we thank you for the precious promises you've provided. We thank you, Lord, for Mount Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for loving sinners such as I. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd put a hedge about us, and I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that Jesus would be exalted. I pray that your people would be edified, and I pray that sinners would be evangelized, realize they're lost, would come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Now, Father, I pray that for that one that may be here today is heavy-hearted, I pray their burdens would be lifted by Christ. I pray if there's someone here today who, Lord, is seeking answers from Thee, that, Lord, uh, You said, Seek and ye shall find. And I pray that, Lord, they would find the answer they need for their life. Lord, I pray if somebody needs encouraged, Lord, they'd find that encouragement. But Lord, I pray that, Lord, especially that one that's out of the will of God, that, Lord, before the final amen, they'll find themselves right with the Lord. Now, Lord, we need your help. We need your touch. Without you, we can do nothing. Bless the reading of the Word of God. Be with our special prayer requests. Help little Caleb touch him. I pray for Miss Nancy in the hospital. You'd help her, touch her. I pray, Lord, for uh, Miss Noreen's sister. I pray for Brother Ed and Miss Vanessa's son. I pray that, Lord, you'd move upon them. Thank you for watching over Christian, Lord. We're thankful for that. Now, Lord, help us. Lord, God, use this unworthy vessel and bless your people. We we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, I want to draw your attention to several things. First of all, we're going to look at this parable, but this chapter is known as the chapter parables. Uh, Throughout this wonderful chapter, Jesus uh, reveals several things through parables. Now, can I say a parable is a story that has an earthly meaning, but it, uh, it has an earthly story, but it's got a hi- hidden heavenly meaning. And the Lord is trying to show some heavenly truths through earthly stories, and He still uses those things today. But can I say in this particular parable, uh, we find in verse three, 33, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Can I say when he's speaking of the kingdom, he's not talking about the age that we live in now. We live in the grace age, the dispensation of the Gentiles of the fullness of times, uh, the church age. Uh, When he's speaking of the kingdom, he's speaking of the millennial reign of Christ. Uh, But the truth he's trying to bring out is uh, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And any time you find leaven in the Bible, it's always a picture of evil or false teachings. Uh, Can I say the Bible said in the last days, uh, 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 perilous times will come, and it goes on to say that they'd heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Uh, And there's a lot of false teachings uh, going on today. Uh, 
uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, the land of uh, what we would call Christianity and there's a lot of things uh, uh, being preached uh, uh, to glorify man and not glorify the Lord. There's a lot of things being preached uh, 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 to uh, uh, so-called better our lives uh, uh, for this age instead of the life to come. Now listen, uh, uh, we all want a better life. We all want an easier life. Uh, we don't want any pains or any problems but uh, the Bible makes it clear uh, 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 that man's days are few and full of trouble uh, and we're going to face problems and we're going to face things uh, and when we have problems we want to come and find something from the word of God to help us uh, but if all of our teachings deal with now, time, uh, and not eternity, uh, it's really not helping us. Uh, uh, what a blessing to know uh, uh, that he that holds the world holds my life uh, and uh, he's able uh, uh, to take care of my problems now and uh, in eternity problems won't matter. Uh, but a lot of false teaching is spreading like cancer. Teachings like uh, mm, every day is a Friday. You're never going to have any problems. Uh, teachings like uh, if you give uh, 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 God a thousand, He'll give you ten thousand. Well, if you got a thousand dollars and you give a thousand dollars, you might just end up broke. Hmm? Uh, but there's all kinds of false teachings. Teachings like there are many roads that lead to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven. And it's through the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and his shed blood from Calvary. And so a little leaven leavens the whole thing. And what we have found is even uh, in, in all facets of life, when false truths are taught long enough, they get embraced and accepted and believed. Hmm? It's amazing. Uh, these young people are in public schools aren't taught real American history anymore. Uh, they're changing our history to fit a narrative of today. It amazes me that uh, in society things are being mistaught and believed. And if it goes on long enough, see what one generation tolerates, the next generation embraces. And it's, it's coming to play. Uh, we live in a day and age where it's taught that... Uh, you can choose your gender. I thought that was already chosen when we come out of the womb. Hmm? And we're taught all kinds of things that if we don't make stand against, before long everybody's going to believe it. Hmm? Hmm? Well, I'll get off on all that. I won't get on socialistic things today. Huh? We see a parable. Jesus is warning. He is teaching them truth, but yet they didn't recognize the truth. You see, before John the Baptist came on the scene, it had been 400 years before the Jews had heard from the Lord. The Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin council had adopted their own doctrines, and now people believed a lie instead of what the truth was. When John the Baptist came on the scene, they didn't know what to do with him. And then when Jesus started giving them simple truths, they hated him and crucified him. Hmm? We see the parable. Now notice the prophecy in verse 35. I'm going somewhere. Verse 35 says, The reason he spoke in parables, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. The prophecy was he would come and speak in parables. He came and speak in parables, and yet they didn't recognize him. Hmm? Today you can preach the truth, and people don't recognize him. Hmm? It's amazing you can build a crowd by telling people how good they are, but if you tell them they're sinners in need of a Savior, they don't want to hear that. Thank God that the night I got saved, the truth was being preached. Hmm? We see the parable, we see the prophecy, but look at the privacy. Verse 35 concludes with saying, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. The Lord Jesus spoke things that nobody had ever heard. As a matter of fact, that was one of the indictments on him. They said, never a man spake like this man spake. Hmm? 
Could I say he was only God manifest in the flesh? Of course he spoke things they never heard. Hmm? I'm interested in that last part of, the, of verse 35. It said, He would utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. For just a few minutes, I want to preach this morning on this thought before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. See, if you believe science, science will tell you that this world's been around for billions of years. And, uh, you know, carbon dating will tell you a bone's been around for billions of years and that stars have been around for billions of years. You've got to be careful believing the science. Because science changes to fit the narrative of what people want you to believe. Hmm? Even Darwin in his deathbed admitted what he'd taught in younger years was a lie. But yet we don't believe what he said in his younger years. That don't fit the narrative of science. Science says uh, we evolved. That's what Darwin said. Mm. No, we didn't evol evolve. We were created. Mm. Uh, so you've got to be careful believing the science. But before the foundation of the world, there are some truths that you and I need to know. Can I say, first of all, before the foundation of the world, uh, before there was a sinner, there was a Savior. Hmm? Huh? Long before man ever sinned against God, long before man uh, partook of the fruit of the tree of uh, 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 good and evil, uh, before man uh, disobeyed God, uh, I want to say thanks be unto God, there was a Savior. Uh, the Bible says in Revelation 13, 8, uh, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names uh, are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain, uh, from the foundation of the world. Uh, long before uh, uh, God ever spoke this world in existence, uh, uh, back in eternity past in the alpha of time, uh, God the Father, God the Son, uh, and God the Holy Ghost uh, uh, knew there was a day when they would create man in their own image. Uh, and they knew there was a day when man would disobey them uh, and man would be tainted by sin. Uh, and they knew there had to be a way uh, uh, to redeem fallen man. Uh, and Jesus, the Son of God, said, Father, uh, I'll go and pay their sin debt. Uh, he was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, what a blessing to know. Uh, long before we'd ever uh, uh, sinned against God, uh, God had already uh, ordained a Savior. Uh, hey, Jesus came into this world uh, not to just be a good preacher, uh, not to be a good teacher, uh, not to be a religious leader. Uh, he came into this world uh, as the Lamb of God uh, headed to the cross of Calvary uh, and he walked up the Via Della Rosa bearing his cross uh, and he yielded himself uh, and he bled and died uh, and shed his blood uh, that sinners uh, could be saved. Uh, what a blessing uh, that hey, the Savior was already on the way uh, before there was a sinner. Uh, can I say uh, not only before there was a sinner there was a Savior before there was a pitfall, there was a plan. Mm. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 4, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Can I say what was predestinated by God was not who would be saved and who would be lost, but what was predestinated by God, the plan that God had set forth... Uh, that anybody that would be saved would be saved through Jesus Christ. The plan was set in order that we would be saved in Him. Not by the works that you do. Not by being baptized. Not by joining a church or shaking a hand of a preacher. Not by how much money you would give. But before there was ever a pitfall, before there was ever sin, there was a plan already in place by God that you and I could be saved. And if we'd be saved, we'd be saved through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sins would be washed in His blood. Hmm? Why do you think God killed those animals to clothe Adam and Eve of their nakedness to let them know blood would be shed for their sin 
And can I say, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And there was a plan before there was a pitfall. Mm -mm. Aren't you glad God had it already ordained? You know, you and I don't even, we can't, we can't even get a plan put together to, to put our socks on right. But God knew there'd have to be a way where sinners could be saved. And aren't you glad he made a way that all sinners could be saved? You didn't have to be a blue blood. You didn't have to be a Trump or a Gates. You could just be an old, sorry, no good sinner and be saved. Huh? Aren't you glad he made a way where religious people could get saved? Nicodemus did. Aren't you glad he made a way uh, where rich people could get saved? Joseph of Arimathea did. Uh, aren't you glad he made a way uh, where uh, smart people could get saved uh, and where dumb people could get saved? Uh, 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 where uh, 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 moral people could get saved and then rotten sinners could get saved. I mean, the Apostle Paul was the chief of sinners. Uh, he was guilty uh, of murdering Christians, uh, but yet God, uh, uh, in mercy and love, uh, made a way where even Saul of Tarsus could get saved. Uh, then he called him to preach the word of God. Uh, wrote most of the New Testament. Uh, how, how could that happen? Because God had a plan. Uh, and God's plan uh, is conditional on the mercy and grace of Almighty God. Uh, uh, grace uh, is the unmerited favor of God. We couldn't earn it, uh, but God granted it. Uh, and what a blessing. Uh, he chose to save that which was lost. Uh, hey, the only condition for getting saved uh, is to know that you need to get saved. Uh, and God chose through the preaching of the word of God uh, to save them that would believe. Uh, how do we know we're lost? Because of the word of God. Uh, uh, it condemns us, uh, but then it'll, hallelujah, uh, uh, convict us and change us for all of eternity. Uh, I'm glad before there was a pitfall, there was a plan. Isn't it amazing how when man tries something that don't work and they're always trying to fix it, always trying to change it, always... Aren't you glad God's plan never had to be changed? He knew the need, knew how to perform it, and put it in action, and we've not needed another plan. Mm -mm. You know why I don't need a new Bible? This one still works. Mm. Uh, you know why they do make uh, new Bibles all the time, coming out with new versions? Just look in the front of it. You'll see something that says copyright. It's because they make money on it. Huh? Do you know the King James Bible doesn't have a copyright? You can print out as many copies of it as you want. Give it out as much as you want. Hey, it's not about making money. Are you listening? Huh? Just thought I'd throw that in. Huh? Can I say before the foundation of the world, before there was ever guilt, there was grace. Mm. Uh, listen. She just sang that song. I didn't know she was going to sing that song. She sang that song about prodigals feeling unworthy. I can understand that. See, when we fail the grace of God, as good Brother Aaron as God's been to us, and then we fail the grace of God, we feel awful guilty about that. Hmm. Uh, I mean, God's been good to us. He's been good to you, Brother Clint. Yes. But if you step in a mud puddle today, mm -hmm. got sin all over your life, you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, and when prodigals get out, I mean, folks have been faithful and then get out. One reason they have a hard time getting back in is guilt. They have a hard time facing people because people know what they were and then people see what they are and they feel guilty. But see, God had a remedy for that. God knew we'd feel guilty and see under guilt we're condemned under guilt there is no hope under guilt we just swallow in it and, and drown but God had a remedy for guilt it's called grace before there was ever guilt God had a provision for grace 
Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Romans 8, chapter 1 said, There is now therefore no condemnation uh, to them that walk in the Spirit. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Uh, hey, uh, if under that guilt we realize we're out of the will of God, God's got grace, uh, and God allows us to get back in the will of God, uh, and God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, uh, and God uh, has a way. I don't know how he does it. Uh, when we get forgiven, and he forgets about it. Uh, he robes us in his righteousness. Uh, he justifies us by faith. Uh, and the good grace of God now stands on our behalf. Uh, and we're no longer guilty before God. Uh, what a blessing. Now I don't understand it. When I look at the man in the mirror... I see the failures and the sins and the, and the stupid mistakes that I've made. But when God looks at me, he sees himself. I don't understand that. I don't understand the ministry of grace uh, where God, uh, because of what Christ did, uh, uh, God looks at me and he sees Christ. Uh, he sees the blood's been applied. Uh, he sees I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, uh, robed in his righteousness. Uh, he sees me blameless and holy before himself. Say, how does that happen, Grace? Uh, because God knew that without grace we can never rise above guilt mm. he said preacher how do you get beyond the guilt well you quit looking at the man in the mirror and you start looking in the mirror of the word of God and you see Christ and you see what Christ did and you see how good God's been. And you see that God forgave you of your sin. Uh, and you see that God no longer sees your sin. Uh, and you just have to uh, rest on the grace of God uh, and say, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Uh, but by the grace of God, there goeth I. Uh, and we're recipients of God's goodness and grace. Mm -mm. You know one thing I love about our church? We don't care where people come from. We just want to get them to the Lord. And if they get to the Lord, that's good enough for us. Hmm? Huh? I, I've been at churches where they want to dwell on what people were. I'm glad we dwell on where they are in Christ. Because if we want to get back under the blood, there's none of us want to drag anything out from under the blood. It's forgiven. It's cleansed. It's gone. We just want to appreciate where we are. So, preacher, you don't deserve it. You're right. But that doesn't change the fact. Because of the grace of God, I am. Hmm? I'm glad before there was guilt, there was grace. Can you imagine having to live with all the guilt of all your sin? Hmm. Well, I'm glad for grace. Uh, one of the beauties of the grace of God, God forgives and forgets. Amen. One of our problems is, is we choose to remember. That's why we've got to get in the Bible. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high call on Christ. You don't want to go back there. There's nothing good back there. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And what you see is love and grace and mercy and joy. and long You see the goodness of God. Hmm. I'm glad before there was guilt, there was grace. Can I help you? Before there was hell, there was heaven. Uh, now listen, I'll preach on hell in a minute. You know, Jesus preached on hell twice as much as he did heaven. There is a place called hell now, and hell's going to be dumped in a place called the lake of fire. And all those that reject Christ, they're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire paying for their own sins because they refuse to let Jesus pay for their sins. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, it's not all just hell and damnation. Uh, I'm thankful. Uh, there is a place called heaven. Uh, there is a place called glory. Uh, there is the abode of God. Uh, and those that put their faith and trust 
trust in God. Uh, not only does he forgive them of their sins, uh, but he writes their name down in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, they become a citizen of heaven. Uh, do you realize our conversations recorded in heaven? Uh, our citizenship is in heaven. Uh, we are made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Uh, and there's coming a day. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, when you got saved, you got born again. Uh, when you got saved, you got adopted into the family of God whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, but there's coming a day, neighbor, uh, uh, when the bride of Christ is going to be married to Christ. Uh, hey, uh, we were born in a family, adopted in a family. We'll be married in a family. Uh, uh, you need to get it in your pea brain. You're in the family. Uh, hey, uh, and he's going to repair a place for us. Uh, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, uh, I would have told you I go to repair a place for you. Uh, and if I go to repair a place for you, I will come again. Uh, receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, hey, uh, John saw it coming down, New Jerusalem out of heaven. Uh, and he said, that's the place uh, where the bride of Christ is going to stay forevermore. Uh, he said, it's a four-squared city. Uh, it had foundations, 12 of them. Uh, each one of them a mile and a half high, 18 miles uh, of precious stones. Uh, it has streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. Uh, he said, but most importantly, uh, uh, the Lamb is the light of the city. Uh, and there is a throne uh, which uh, has rainbows and lightnings coming out of it. Uh, and a crystal river that flows from it. Uh, and he said, around the throne, uh, I saw people from every tongue and kindred and nation uh, crying, worthy is the Lamb uh, uh, to receive power and honor and glory. Uh, hey, I'm here to tell you, neighbor, uh, hey, that's where I'm a going. Uh, not because of what I've done, because of what he's done for me. Uh, and before there was a hell, uh, there's a heaven. Uh, and we get to go and dwell in the abode of God. Uh, what a blessing. Amen. Don't threaten me with heaven. Um, people say, preacher, you might die of a heart attack. Oh, well. The Bible said, be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, before my body hits the ground, I'll be in glory. Uh, uh, what a blessing. I'm glad there's a heaven, a place we call home. Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. Since the third Saturday night of March in 1974, I've been looking for that same city. And can I say, I believe it's just over the horizon. We're closer than we've ever been before, but I can almost hear them singing on that land. Uh, hey, this thing's winding down. Uh, just about everything that has to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. Uh, 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 I'm listening for the trumpet. The Lord's coming back for his church uh, and we'll live with him forevermore. I got one more thought. I know the weather changed. And I know some of you have been working extra. You're worn out. And I know that we was limited on some songs we could sing. And I know all those factors work, work into our worship. But listen, I'm glad, in spite of everything, God's in control. Amen. Now listen, again, I didn't know what she was singing. I just know what the Lord gave me before you knew you were lost, you were loved. Let me say that again. Before you knew you were lost, you were loved. In Jeremiah 31, 3, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Before you was, you were loved. Uh, before there was a world, God loved us. Uh, see, contrary to popular opinion, God's the one that forms you in the womb. God loves you. And can I say what everybody really wants in this world is love and acceptance. Now, I don't understand how some people can paint their hair green and think they're going to be accepted. I don't understand that. Uh, 
it makes me want to run. Uh, but Chad, I look at it, I think, freak. Hmm? Uh, sometimes I look at you and think the same thing. So what are you looking at? huh? <laughs> but listen, even the ones we think are freaks, God loves them. Hmm? The Bible said he tasted death for every man. That's every man that's ever been born and every man that will ever be born because he's loved them. Brother Jim, your own testimony, you was a drunk. I believe you've even told me in the military you flew helicopters and landed, didn't even know how, where you'd been and that you was flying because you was high on something else. Uh, you know, if God didn't love you, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd have died in that condition but he loved you and he just kept putting opportunities in front of you until one day you got sick of that life and you found out there was somebody who loved you and you gave your heart and life to him and now you love him because he first loved you see even when you was lost he loved you hmm? uh, even when you was acting a fool he loved you. I promise you, when you wasn't searching for him, he was searching for you. Because he loved you. For God so loved the world. That means it on purpose. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I, you know, Brittany said about being unlovable. But he loves us on purpose. Hmm? He looks at us and just loves us. Now listen. In March, we're expecting our first grandbaby, little Ella Rose. Now, I've never seen her, but I love her. I've never held her, but I love her. She hadn't even called me Big Rev yet, but I love her. Huh? She could call me Papa Poo Poo, and I love her. You know what I'm saying? And no, you don't teach her that. Huh? I love her. You say, why would you love something that's not even here yet? Because she's already part of me. Amen. Why did God love us? He created us in his own image. Amen. He breathed into us the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We came from God. That's why he loves us. He loves us because he put something in us that's part of him. He loves us. You say, he don't even know, I don't even know a little Ella Rose. I don't know what color hair she'll have. I don't know what color eyes she have. I don't know anything about her, but I love her. But the deal of it is, is God knew everything about us. And he still loves us. He knew when we'd fail him. He knew when we'd blaspheme him. He knew when we would disgrace him. He knew uh, all those things and he still loved us. Uh, and even after he saved us, we still knew, he still knew we'd fail his grace uh, and we'd blow it every now and then. And he still loves us, my dear friends. See, long before you ever knew anything about him, he knew everything about you. And he still loved you. Hmm? And can I say... He even allowed you to be here today because he loves you. And just like I spoke to Brother Jim, today might be your last opportunity to receive his love. You see, listen, the Lord told Noah, God's spirit will not always strive with man. See, God does love us. And God does have grace for us. And God does have mercy for us. And God is long-suffering for us. But there comes a time when you'll tell God no for the last time. And God will say, okay. If you don't want me, somebody else will. And friend, if you're a stranger to the grace of God, you may be treading on thin ice. And even if... It isn't your last opportunity. It might be the last time the gospel's ever preached to you because he might come for his church. And then it'll be too late for you. Friend, he loves you. And he desires all 
the beauty and blessings of heaven in your life. And the only way that that will happen is by you accepting him as your personal Savior. You see, the moment you got saved, the Holy Spirit started working in you the fruit of the Spirit, the beauties and blessings of heaven, gentleness, goodness, meekness, love, joy, all the precious things that the Spirit of God develops in us. What a blessing that when He saves us, He makes new creatures out of us. We're, we're, we're walking around in the same body, got the same name, look the same, but we're different. What's the difference, Him? Amen. And things I used to do, Brother Camille, I don't do anymore. Huh? The mouth I used to have, I don't have anymore. Amen. The thoughts I used to have, I, I, they, they've changed. Things have changed. Used to, I hated coming to church. Now I love coming to church. Songs I used to hate for them to sing. I, I say it every now and then. That song, Press Along Weary Pilgrim, Miss Lynn, I hated that song. We had them green song books, and it took up two pages, and it was slower than Christmas. Uh, and they'd say, Press Along Weary. And I wanted to jump off a bridge. But I got born again. And I love that song. Keep on keeping on is what it's saying. Don't give up. Uh, the Lord's coming. The Lord's going to bless. Uh, just keep seeking the Lord. I love that old song. Uh, don't sing it, Clint, but I love it. Huh? Why? What happened? The Lord. Uh, and see, my dear friend, he wants to develop himself in you wants to change your eternity, but he wants to give you a better life now. Yeah. And that can happen if you'll give your heart and life to him. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. If you don't know the Lord, we'd love to introduce you to him. Uh, say, preacher, I, I don't know how to be saved. All you need to know is that you need to be saved. He'll take care of the rest. It's real simple. Even a child can understand it. But maybe you're here today and you're saved. And it's been a while since you really thanked him for his goodness and his grace. Maybe you want to come and thank him. Maybe today you just want to come and tell him you love him. Maybe today he's put his finger on something in your life and you feel a little guilty and you want to get that taken care of. He'll, he'll get it taken care of. Just come, get it taken care of. Maybe today during the invitation, God's put somebody on your heart. Maybe you want to go put your arms around and just tell him they've been a blessing. I don't know. All I know is we're going to have an invitation. The Spirit of God is going to start speaking to hearts. And I've learned this. If he speaks to your heart, you just do what he says. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But by all means, if you don't know the Lord, what better day to know the Lord than today? Because before you ever was, he started making provisions for this day so you could hear one more time that he loved you that he's got grace for you, that he had a plan so he could save you. He wants to save you today because today's the day of salvation. You don't know him. Why don't you come and trust in the Lord? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. I have Miss Tina come pick out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. I want to thank you for grace and mercy and long-suffering. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us in spite of us. And God, thank you for your goodness. Now, Lord, I know I rambled and stumbled. And, but, Lord, I pray you'd take something we said and speak to people's hearts. I pray for somebody here unsaved. The sweet Holy Ghost of God through cords of love would draw them to an altar of repentance. Lord, I pray for somebody here today Lord, they, they know you, but Lord, they just feel like they failed you so much. I pray you've just given an extra dose of grace and love today. Lord, there may be somebody here today hurting. Lord, I pray maybe you send a saint of God by their way. Lord, and bear their burden and be a blessing to them. Lord, you know better than I the hurt behind so many smiles when people come to the house of God. I pray for a balm of Gilead for somebody that's really hurting here today. 
God, just speak to hearts. Help your people. Lord, glorify your name. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.